Hello and welcome to another screencast. We have with us today Beauty, Brains, and Brawn. And Mrs. Kim's joining us as well as Mrs. Erling. So this is chapter 13, section 2, pages 518 to 525. This is, deals with the skeletal system. Now as most of you got as most of you guys know, the skeletal system is uh, made or is there more for uh, protection. Uh, sorry, the skeletal system is not only there for protection, but it also does four other things. Most people think it's just there to protect your organs, like your brain and your heart, things like that. But it also enables you guys to move. Muscles attach to these bones and they pull on the bones, enabling you guys to run, jump, and do all this activity. They also are there for shape and support. Your bones give you guys your structure. It's how uh, your bones um, um, are there for uh, the support and uh, your shape, uh, your, your shape because your your skeletal system. Um, a lot of people don't know this and a lot of students miss this. Um, bones also produce blood cells. It's not your cart or uh, it's not your uh, circulatory system that produces blood cells, but it's your skeletal system that produces your red blood cells. So bones are there for shape and support, enable you to move, protect your organs. They produce blood cells as well as they store minerals that your body needs. Your mom or dad might have told you, hey, drink your milk. It drink your milk it's there uh, to help your bones get stronger your teeth get stronger well they're absolutely correct because your bones help store calcium and a lack of calcium could cause problems this is what we call osteoporosis and that's a weakening of the bones a lot of older uh, uh, people have that especially older women and uh, osteoporosis uh, people with osteoporosis tend to break their bones more than people without osteoporosis so your skeletal system is there for shape and support, okay? Your backbone, okay, is the center of your skeletal system and is made up of 33 vertebrae, okay? These are individual bones that allow, uh, well, I'm going to give you the answer here. It allows you guys to move in all sorts of directions, okay? You guys can move left, right, forward, and backward. If it was just one bone, you, pr you could not do that. You'd be stiff, stiff as a board. That's where it comes from. Um, uh, now a snake, a snake obviously twists around a lot. They have a lot more vertebrae. A snake typically typically has about 200 vertebrae, so they're allowed to, or they're uh, they're able to twist and turn a lot more than you or I. So, skeletal system, center of the skeletal system is your backbone or the vertebrae. So the skeleton allows us to move and it pro uh, protects vital organs. Uh, muscles pull on bones to make the body move. Without muscles, um, we couldn't do this. So what organs can you think of that are protected by bones? Uh, pause the video if you need to. Take a moment, think about it. Well, some organs uh, that are protected by your skeleton are the heart, the lungs, and the brain. And think about for a moment, if we didn't have that to protect our heart, our lungs, and our brain, how many times have you whacked yourself on the head or um, maybe been punched in the chest by a sibling? That would be a lot worse without your skeleton. Your bones produce and store substances like Mr. Knox was talking about with minerals like calcium. Uh, new blood cells are formed in the bone marrow. Bone marrow is in the center of the bone and you can see in the picture there's two different colors of bone marrow. There's red bone marrow uh, which has to do with the production of blood cells and there's yellow bone marrow which has to do with storing fat and extra energy. Uh, the minerals calcium and phosphorus are stored in the bone and they are released as needed by the body. Our skeleton uh, also has joints. Joints allow bones to move in many different directions. We have two types of joints, uh, movable and immovable joints. 
For the category of movable joints, there's four different types. We have hinge joints. Hinge joints allow us to move in a forward and backwards motion, kind of like a door. And we have hinge joints on our knees and our elbows. Here's a picture of a hinge joint with a hinge next to it for comparison. We have ball and socket joints. So your hips are a ball and socket joint. Same with your shoulder. Some of you may know someone or maybe even had this experiment, but sometimes um, maybe in a sports game, you can dislocate your shoulder and that's when that ball has popped out of the socket. We have pivot joints which are found on our neck. This allows us to move our neck and turn it from side to side. And we have sliding joints, which are found in our wrist and ankle, and that lets us bend and flex. Now, immovable joints are found on the bones of the skull, and if you think about it, you wouldn't really want your skull to move too much. Um, if you go online to phschool.com and you enter web, the web code CEP4012, you can see some active art about the joints of the skeleton. Ligaments hold bones together at the movable joints. You can see that it's like a little rubber band and it holds the bones together. Cartilage protect the ends of the bones, keeps it from grinding against each other, and you have cartilage in many different places, not only at the ends of bones, you have them on the tip of your nose, you have them on the outside of your ears, you have them between your um, ribs and vertebrae. And cartilage is a lot softer than bone, and that's why you are able to move that. And a funny thing about cartilage is that you um, it has mostly water, so when you take an x-ray, they don't show up in the x-rays. Sharks are all made of cartilage. They don't have any bone at all. And babies are born with um, mostly cartilage, which harden as they get older and become regular bone. You have three parts of a bone. We have compact bone, which is on the outside and it's very hard. Spongy bone, just like a sponge, it has a whole bunch of holes and it's very light and it, it's on the inside. And then in the very middle of your bone, we, you have marrow. And just like Mrs. Erling said, marrow produces blood cells, red ones, and then also they can also store fat. Here is a diagram. So we have the compact bone on the outside, spongy bone, it looks like a sponge, and then the marrow. This one happens to be yellow marrow. Okay, so when you are a baby, when you're born, most of your bones contain red marrow. As a teenager, actually starting around age of seven, only your femur, skull, hip bones, and breastbone contain red marrow. Your other bones contain yellow marrow. Why do you think this is? Well, as a baby, you're going to need to form more blood cells. And that's why you need to make a lot more. But then as you get older, the red marrow is replaced by fat. And before I end this video, I just want to say that Mr. Knox's introduction, he was just trying to model how not to behave, not to make fun of your friends. Thank you.